about those hilly trails over there? Right. Maybe it has something to do with that sort of... dark energy they're giving off. Uh-oh. This is right by the Wangshu Inn, too. Oh, the guests are in great danger. Now that we've seen it, if we don't do anything about it, Paimon will feel really guilty. <sighs> Let's go take care of them. Shadows of Fate! Shows. Shall we go say hi? Ahem. Hello! Allow us to introduce ourselves. This is... Please, if you're here to thank me, there's no need. Cleansing the world of evil is the duty of the Adepti. Think nothing of it. I certainly don't. Wait. Who are you? One had assumed you were followers, but on closer inspection, it seems that we have not met. My name's Paimon, and this is my sidekick. Then it is right that our paths coincide. One, too, shall introduce oneself, for it is good manners to comply. <clears throat> the one before you is the Adeptus, Master of Stars, Though one is better known to one's followers as Star Snatcher. One descended from one's mountain abode to cleanse the world of evil, whereupon fate saw fit that our paths should cross. Now, tell me that which you wish for. Our wishes? Paimon thought that the Adepti and Leli were just really good in battle. You mean you can grant people's wishes too? <laughs> There are different levels of Adepti. Are not the stars loftier than the mountains, clouds, and moon? Yet, it is unbecoming of an Adepti to boast of one's powers. One would have you first speak to one's followers, and only then make your verdict. Have you seen the Master of Stars in action? His power truly hails from the Divine. I believe that now, there is finally some hope for my ailing father. Watching him use his magic is all the proof you need. A true Adeptus, no doubt about it. Not long ago, I sought some medicine from him on behalf of my ailing father. The difference with Boo Boo Pharmacy's prescriptions was like night and day, I tell you. Once it was boiled and ready, it gave off this really ethereal mist. Seemed pretty adeptal to me. Hm. Could have also been because there was misflower in it, though. Adepti medicine is surely the most potent. <laughs> My father will recover soon. I just know it. Sure, you have to make some sacrifices if you seek help from an adeptus like the Master of Stars. I had to give a few antiques as offerings. But my father's life is worth much more than a few old relics, right? The Millilith don't really need to do shifts when the Master of Stars is around, do they? Uh, I'm a merchant, and I had an especially valuable batch of goods that needed transporting recently. So I asked the Master of Stars if he would make the journey with me, as presumptuous as that was. Uh, reason being, monsters run a mile as soon as he so much as holds up his talisman. Uh, we didn't have the slightest bit of trouble the whole journey. It didn't come cheap, of course, but then soliciting the services of a god is a monumental affair. Just look at the rite of dissension. So I can accept it, but I doubt that most from outside of Liu would be willing to.
Finally, a life full of hope and purpose. Oh, are you believers too? After my fiancé had been left, I cried every day. But then I turned to the Master of Stars for help. At his suggestion, I started burning paintings of my fiancé and casting the ashes into the ocean at sunrise. I can't explain it, but it really worked. <sighs> I know in my heart that he'll return. This is not some sort of positive thinking trick. I'm certain of it. I'm so overjoyed that I gave a portion of my wedding budget to the Master of Stars as an offering. After all, if not for him, I wouldn't be getting my fiancé back, in which case I wouldn't need it anyway. What do you think? One's adherents may exaggerate a little, but they speak from the heart. <laughs> Surely you jest. There was once a senior adeptus, Xie Wu Liang, known to the people as Liang Zi. He said this, All things are connected. That which mortals call imagination is merely the bridge betwixt the spiritual and the material. In other words, their wishes are already on the path of transitioning into reality. Does this make things clearer? Uh, nope. It makes them way more complicated. But basically what you're saying is that their wishes can come true, right? Indeed. You are perceptive, my diminutive friend. Okay. Um, so we also have one other question. Oh? You need but ask. Hey, isn't that a bit inappropriate? Hmm. Indeed. It would be inappropriate for one to remove one's mask. One wanders among mortals, doing good and cleansing evil. One reveals not one's visage to avoid further disturbance to this realm than is necessary. Ah, huh, got it. Now then, what are your wishes? Hmm. One senses that a tragic tale lies behind this wish. So be it. This wish is not beyond one's power to grant. But first, one must see some proof of your faith. What's that supposed to mean? The way of the Adepti cannot be grasped from words alone. One must seek the profound truths that lie beyond them. Should you fail to perceive one's hidden meaning, then regrettably, one may lend you no aid. What do we do? Python doesn't understand him at all. Oh, that's right! Some of those believers mentioned that they had to pay a pretty sum for the Adeptus' help, didn't they? Well, Paimon's not forking over any Mora, and we don't have anything valuable enough on us. You don't even have a vision. Hey, why don't we make him a tasty snack? No one can resist the temptation of good food, can they? Yep, a tasty snack is sure to work. <laughs> Why don't we head over to Wanwen Bookhouse and see if they got any new recipes in? So, you'd like a copy of Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti? Yes. Here and keep the change. Oh, aren't you generous? Thank you for your patronage. Hey, isn't that... um... Star Snapper? What a coincidence running into him again! Did he 
Did you hear the name of the book he just bought? Was it Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti? Uh, well, anyway, it was definitely a book about the Adepti. Why would an Adeptus want to buy a book about himself? Really? What's so fishy about him? Huh. That's a good point. None of the other Adepti we've met seemed like they needed anything from anyone. Hmm. Paimon thinks we should check out that book. Maybe we'll find out something about this guy that we can use. Hey there! We'd like a copy of Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti. Do you have one in stock? Huh. Since when did that old chestnut become a bestseller? You're a rare breed of youngster if this is what you like to read. But you should be able to find a copy somewhere on that shelf over there. So, are you buying or not? This is the one! Let's see what it's all about, shall we? In ancient times, Liyue was a land of misery, where the shadow of evil loomed large. As slain gods festered, their vengeful wrath cursed the world, manifesting in infernal forms. When demons stirred, miasmas, monsters, and mutations infested the land. Then Rex Lapis summoned the Yakshas to vanquish the demons. They swore an oath, restore order through slaughter, purge evil through battle. To this, we dedicate our lives. Eons of bloodshed later, karmic debt weighed upon them, phantom wrath seeping into their broken souls. They went mad with fear, turned on each other, or succumbed to the darkness. Of the five foremost Yakshas, death came to three, while the fourth vanished without a trace. In the millennia since, one conqueror of demons remains the sole surviving Yaksha in the mortal realm. And only on moonlit nights, in the glow from Guyan, and in the sound of the Dihua flute, is his memory preserved. This book is about the Yakshas, a group of Adepti who defend Lyue. Hmm, seems like a pretty niche topic. Was there any to you? So, there used to be five main Yakshas, but supposedly only one of them is still alive today. Do you think that it could have anything to do with that Star Snatcher guy? Hmm. No, surely not. He doesn't exactly give off the impression that he's been suffering for thousands of years. The book says that the wrathful spirits of the gods defeated during the Archon War can sometimes cause plagues, monsters, or mutations. All of which sound pretty horrendous. Oh, hey, wait a second. Paimon wonders if... Do you think those super evil hilly trolls we saw earlier were the mutations that the book's talking about? The book says that the Yakshas, after fighting against the wrath of the gods for thousands of years, became bound by karma. Poisoned by the hateful thoughts of the gods, the Yakshas would often descend into indescribable fits of terror, rage, or agony. Oh, it's so tragic. After everything they went through in all of their years of protecting Lyue, they got no reward and had to deal with so much suffering instead. Yep, Paimon thinks we've already summed up all the key points. So back to the matter at hand. The things we need answers on are 1. Where did those super evil looking hilly trolls come from? And 2. What does Star Snatcher have to do with the Yakshas, right? Now to head back to where this all started and commence our investigation! Let's part the fog of mystery that hangs over Dway and Karst and let the truth shine through in its full glory! <laughs> to be honest, Paimon actually hopes he is a real
real Adeptus. Uh, his exorcism techniques seemed real enough, at least. Hmm... But if we get our hopes up, there's further for them to come down. So, it makes sense to investigate thoroughly first, just to be sure. Alright, let's head back to Wang Xiu Inn! Flee at my command, foul demon! Flee! Oh, why... Why won't you flee? Uh-oh. Looks like Star Snatcher's in trouble! And there are innocent bystanders here, too! Uh, we have to step in! Yeah! Solidify! Access denied! Oz, reveal! Why didn't the Sigil of Permission do anything? Has the evil aura of these hilly churls grown in intensity? Sigil of Permission, huh? Now why does that sound familiar? Right! It's a keepsake of the Adepti, so it must still contain traces of their power! <gasps> no wonder he was able to scare those monsters away earlier! What are you two babbling on about? One is merely underslept, meaning that one's adeptal power is not in full flow. Were one but given another opportunity... Well, as it happens, there goes another bunch of evil hilly churls over there! Should we leave them to you, then? I... uh... uh one suddenly feels ill at ease. Surely one has overexpended one's adeptal powers, otherwise one would surely purge these infernal beings at once. Ugh, so you were just bragging after all! We were right to be suspicious! <sighs> Come on, Traveler. Looks like it's up to us. Use your elemental sight and hunt them down! <laughs> Next on the agenda... Oh, it's that Conqueror of Demons again! No wonder! It's you. I remember you. I was purging some living beings that had been tainted by the demonic. It would appear that I have caused you some trouble. Huh? He isn't usually this polite. What's going on? But you are exercising demons! How is that causing trouble? That is because the changes that occurred in these monsters stem from me. Or more precisely, from the karma I have accumulated. Mutations? Karma? Oh, does that mean... Yeah! Paimon remembers that Xiao is also called the Vigilant Yaksha, isn't he? So... So that means... Oh... <gasps> <laughs> I see. You must mean that piece of literati fan fiction from a few hundred years ago. <laughs> All things are impermanent, and to exist is to suffer. We Yakshas have no need of sympathy or tears. My comrades who have passed on would see your tears as a stain upon their legacy. Oh, uh, I'm unsorry. It matters not. In any case, I am on my way to purge a cavern of demonic influence, so we shall part ways here. Wait! Take us with you! We'll be a big help! Paimon promises! No need. I am used to fighting alone. And in any case, these mutations originated from me to begin with. Come on, then. Um, so, Xiao, 
You've been suffering from the bad karma all this time? Suffering is my price to pay for eons of endless slaughter. I have come to accept this. But in recent years, other living things have suffered when the burden should be mine alone to bear. I must reflect on this. Ooh, this place gives Paimon goosebumps. I will use the ritual known as the Bane of All Evil to relieve this place of its karma. You must remain calm. Do not allow yourself to be affected by the lingering wrath of bygone gods. by such a name. So he is a fraud! Well, we'll continue this discussion later. We can focus on your battle for now. It 
is good that we came here. An unusual number of living things had fallen under infernal influence. Had we not arrived in good time, the consequences would have been unthinkable. Now, this Star Snatcher you speak of, what is the situation? Ooh, Paimon will tell you! An Adeptus who grants wishes. To think that people could be so easily deceived by such blatant lies. As an Adeptus, do you have the power to grant wishes, Xiao? The Liyue of yesteryear would never ask the Adepti for boons unearned. Millennia ago, the ancestral people of Liyue asked for nothing more than the strength to defend the land they called their home. Uh, to be honest, an Adepti who grants people's wishes is probably more appealing to people nowadays. However feeble people nowadays may be, they are not my concern. I concern myself only with following Rex Lapis's original decree. Oops, Paimon spoke without thinking again. Oh, uh, one more thing? That fake Adeptus has a sigil of permission. It's what he uses to exercise demons. Wait, truly? <laughs> Fool. Exercising demons without exterminating them. It is no wonder they have been congregating here. If this continues, things may spiral out of even my control. We must confiscate his sigil of permission. Great minds think alike! Paimon agrees. We've got to show that trickster what you get for trying to fool us! And it just so happens that we've got a real Adeptus with us too! If Xiao were to teach Star Snatcher a lesson, you can bet he'll never dare to pose as an Adeptus ever again! No. I only slay demons. I do not kill mortals. Who said anything about killing him? <laughs> it would certainly benefit Liyue if we could convince him to cease his wicked ways. I possess an art called Dream Trawler. It is normally used to separate the soul from the body, that one might cultivate oneself in a waking dream. But it can also be used to call forth the spirits of others. Whoa! Now that's a real Adepti art for ya! A ritual must be performed for this art to be used. Assist me in gathering a few items. A sensor, seven lamps, and something to reduce the temperature. Reduce the temperature? Oh, some mist flowers will probably do, right? But as for the sensor and the seven lamps... Hmm... Probably not the kinds of things we're gonna just stumble across in the wild. Do you know of the two Yaksha statues that stand guard beside a merchant road on the southern face of Mount Tianhung? The ancestors of the people of Liyue built shrines there to honor the Yakshas. You should still be able to find some ceremonial items there. Once you have found them, meet me at the Yaksha statues after nightfall, and I will teach you how to use this art. The spirit soars the mountains high, while the body rests as the world goes by. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but... Well, I'll be. Isn't that something? A pair walk into a shrine, neither to seek nor worship gods or adepti, but to pilfer the tools of worship for their own ends. <laughs> to ask, but we just need them for a short while, honest. For the dream trawler ritual, I trust. <gasps> How'd you know that? I have been in the shrine for far longer than you would expect. Perhaps as a reward for my faithfulness, I have been endowed with some understanding of the Adepti arts. Wow, Hyman's never heard of that happening before. Ah, uh, it matters not. Take what you need. It is a fortuitous thing that these items may be of service to you. 
They served little purpose here, in any case. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing that you need concern yourself with. Please, take what you wish. This sensor should be fine, right? At least it isn't as run down as the shrine. So next, we just need to grab the seven star lamps, right? The sooner we start, the sooner we'll be done! Once you had acquired what you came for, you would forget about me and simply be on your way. Ah, it's that guy's voice! Hello? W where are you? My physical form ceased to exist over a thousand years ago. What you witnessed earlier was an illusion, created by the Adepti art known as Mortal Lingering. Now that you have taken the Seven Star Lamps and Sensor used in the Mortal Lingering Ritual, my form is no longer visible to you. <laughs> it is not untrue to say this. The line between Adepti and Ghosts is a fine one indeed. I was once a junior in the Order of the Yakshas, bestowed with the name Pervases by Rex Lapis himself. Yet my strength failed, and I was slain in battle. Today is the anniversary of my death. My last wish was to see a modern Liyue, and so I took the liberty of performing this ritual here. That aside, you were sent here by the Conqueror of Demons, were you not? So, you two know each other then? I sense his aura upon you, that and the heavy burden of his karma. <sighs> Even after all these millennia, he still must endure such tremendous suffering. I am truly ashamed. Don't say that, Pervases. You sacrificed your life for Lila, didn't you? Life is a precious thing, yes. But when I think of the burden that the Conqueror of Demons must bear... <sighs> death seems to me to have been the easy way out. A selfish indulgence, even. Pervases... <laughs> I apologize. Birthdays are joyful occasions. But by the same token, it is hard not to be melancholy on the anniversary of one's death. The mortal lingering will not last much longer. Take care, you two, and please pass on my regards to the Conqueror of Demons. <sighs> if only I could taste some authentic grilled ticker fish once more. By wave and storm, I hunt for fish. By wind and snow, I slay evil. Huh? Looks like he's gone then. Paimon really hopes that at least someone will remember Pervases the Yaksha. We should get going. But let's come back here and make an offering sometime.
as mentes Have you gathered the items for the ritual? Hmm. This sensor and these lamps. Their designs are flawless, almost as if they were made specifically for use in the Adepti arts. Where did you come by them? Oh, and, um, he says hi! Pervases. <sighs> yes. This does have the hallmarks of something Pervases might do. As I thought, it seems that he could not leave Liyue behind, either. I hope that its present state will allow him to rest in peace. <laughs> well then, let us begin preparing for the ritual. Place the sensor in the middle, and surround it with the seven star lamps. Adorn the area with the items of abject cold. Once this is done, we shall proceed. Yes, this will do. Now, the next step is the key to performing Dream Trawler. There are four steps to performing this ritual. Offering incense, meditation, incantation, and loosing an arrow. That seems like a real rigmarole. Adepti arts are the product of millennia of study by Adepti. Do not dismiss their mystical workings as rigmarole. Failure to take this seriously could cause the technique to devour one's own body, or cause the spirit to be sundered from one's flesh permanently. <sighs> Stop talking! I'm sorry! When offering the incense, we place the incense into the censer with reverence for Rex Lapis in our hearts. Meditation is to empty ourselves of trivial thoughts, and to focus on the target of the art we are performing. Then we shall recite the incantation in a loud voice. Devayaksha, bring forth sin! Finally, we will loose an arrow towards each of the Yaksha statues to enlist their authority for our contract. If all goes well, Star Snatcher's soul will be brought forth shortly. If you have no other questions, let us begin. Think about that fraud. Hmm. Oh. Ah. Hmm. Uh. Bring forth sin. It looks like the Yaksha statues are glowing at the waist. So we just fire one arrow each at the glowing parts, right? Close enough. Leave the rest to me. You two get ready to greet him. Where is one? Huh? You two look familiar. What's with one's body? One feels light. Weightless. Dead. Impossible. One was just lying in peaceful repose at Wang Shuin. Wait. That must be it. Of course it must. <laughs> as expected of an adeptus such as oneself. One must indeed be in a dream. Ugh. There's no helping this guy, is there? Huh? What is the meaning of this? Do you truly think that one will permit such insolence in one's own dreams? Alright, time to take him down a peg. Gather! Oh, such impertinence! Where are one's followers when one needs them? Hey, hey, stop it! Stop it! Ow! What's happening? Is this... Please stop! I surrender! I surrender! No! 
No, never again. You... you almost killed me. Oh, how did I ever have the misfortune to meet you two? Please, great adept, I spare my life. I won't do this ever again, I swear it. We did call your spirit here, but we're not Adepti. She, however, is. You deceive the masses with quackery. Masquerade as an Adeptus. Exorcise demons without exterminating them. And display a callous lack of regard for life. One day, you will reap that which you have sown. For those who invite the Infernal into their lives, there is no redemption. Uh, I... Sure. Seems like Shell's got him scared stiff. Oh, great Adeptus. Might I ask your name? It really is you. It's truly you. Never in my life did I imagine that I might meet the conqueror of demons, the vigilant Yaksha himself. You know about Shell? Of course. My grandfather was a folklorist. I learned the tales of the Conqueror of Demons at his knee. To this day, I am an avid collector of books concerning the Yakshas. But ever since I discovered a sigil of permission while rummaging through my grandfather's personal effects, at first, I was just imitating the Adepti for fun. But slowly, I began to stray further and further from the righteous path. Huh. So to sum you up, you're Xiao's biggest fan? Yes. Thank you both for allowing me to witness the conqueror of demons in the flesh. It's like a dream come true. Uh, that wasn't quite our intention. Oh, great conqueror of demons, please allow me to swear this oath before you. I swear to turn away from evil, to live an honest life, and to never again stain the name of the Adepti. I will remember your oath. Now go. Thank you. A thousand thanks for your forgiveness, and for all that you have done for Lear. He seemed very earnest when he was making that oath there. Guess he won't be tricking anyone anymore. Oh, wait. We haven't gotten the sigil of permission back yet. Let's head over to Wang Shuin first thing tomorrow and look for him. Hey there, boss. Star Snatcher's staying here, right? Star Snatcher. Hmm. You mean the false adeptus who wore a mask? He signed in here under the name Wang Ping An. He's already checked out. He said he wished to go on a solo pilgrimage. Ah, yes! He also requested that I give this letter to a traveler who journeys together with a talking fairy, should they come asking for him. Talking fairy? Who's that? Well, anyway, you must be the traveler. Here's the letter. How strange that he would leave a letter for us. Is this the final attempt to fool us, maybe? Come on, open it! Paimon's curious! Huh? Seems like he actually left us a few nice trinkets! Along with... <gasps> Woohoo! The sigil of permission! Paimon hasn't met a bad guy like him in a long time! Yeah! Anyway, let's go take the sigil of permission to Xiao, shall we? Let me guess where you're from. Ah! There you are! We got the sigil of permission back. Do you want to take it? You have my thanks. May I take your order, sir? One grilled ticker fish. Certainly. We'll prepare it for you immediately. Huh. No almond tofu this time? Well, that's not like you. Ticker fish was Pervasi's favorite dish. I just wanted to see how it tastes. Huh. <sighs>
By wave and storm, I hunt for fish. By wind and snow, I slay evil. <laughs> Was there anything else? I am accustomed to eating alone. Aha! Uh -huh. And so, Detective Paimon and the trusty traveler solved the case and quietly slipped away. Lantern Rite is nearly here. Why don't we decorate the inn this year? Oh, don't you know? On the first full moon of the first month each year, Leoa celebrates the Lantern Rite. It's a festival to commemorate the heroes from the past. After dark, the people release Xiao and Mingxiao lanterns into the night sky. Oh, may the flames of wisdom spread to all and never be extinguished. This is the meaning of the lanterns. We believe they act as the beacons in the night, guiding bygone heroes back to their homeland. Wow, it sounds like a grand festival. And where there's a grand festival, there's always special seasonal snacks. You catch Paimon's drift? You want to get involved in the lantern, right? <sighs> That's great. The festive period leading up to the day itself is all part of the celebrations. <laughs> During this time, we pray to bring peace and ward off bad luck. Leo and locals call it bidding farewell to the old and welcoming the new. If you're looking to take part, it's not too late. Oh, um, also, if you're able to, <clears throat> could you <laughs> try to convince Xiao to go with you? We're not close. I wouldn't know how to ask him myself. But it seems that you've grown familiar. Yeah, Paimon thinks it might be best to leave him alone for a few days. <sighs> I suppose you're right. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it. You should get yourselves down to the harbor. If you leave too late, the city will be crowded with people and you won't be able to make the most of it. Get going. Happy Lantern Rite. Let me guess where you're from. Young man, if I may be so bold, how much for the floating thing, hmm? What a strange thing to say! But Paimon's curious, what number did you have in mind exactly? Oh, forget it! Let's assume you men Paimon is worth more than Mora can buy! <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm having some financial trouble recently. I probably couldn't afford it. I'm just a small-time merchant anyway. I don't deal in rare and exotic treasures. You know, the more you talk, the more suspicious you sound. My, someone's in a grumpy mood, aren't they? Here, maybe some candy will make you feel better. Trustworthy. So, I assume you two are in Liyue for the Lantern Rite? This year's Mingxia Lantern is supposed to be a sight well worth the wait. The Plastrite that will lift the Lantern into the air is the largest in 20 years. It's big enough to make you wonder if the fabled floating city in the clouds really does exist. I guess it must just be held up by a similarly sized chunk of Plastrite. <laughs> I hope our paths cross again. Welcome to Liyue. Well, I can't speak for the whole of Liyue Harbor, but you're always welcome in my store, at least. Wow! So many stalls! Here, just there, the everywhere! Of I'm Ching Ching. I just donated Dolly. She's my rag doll. Last night in my dream, Dolly told me her wish was to fly up into the sky and see the view. So I gave her to the lady over by the big deer lantern. Dolly's wish will come true now. Won't it? I did the right thing. Didn't I? 
Wishes are supposed to come true at the Lantern Rite. Aren't they? Uh, there seems to be something mysterious about this photographic apparatus. Next on the agenda... Healthy body... This year's Ming Xiao Lantern is dedicated to Sky Bracer. He always was a show-off. I'm sure he will be very pleased. Well, that's the plan. I do hope they make the antlers big enough. They were his pride and joy, after all. The story goes that the antlers were made from the very essence of Rex Lapis's divine power, which made it the hardest material in all of Lure. But then that fateful battle happened. The gods exchanged powerful blows, and the mountain started collapsing. To avoid impacting the villagers at the foot of the mountain, the Adeptus got his friend to chop his antlers off. He used those blood-drenched antlers as a wedge to prop up the mountain. And if that wasn't enough of a sacrifice, he then kept on fighting until his blood was drained and his life ran out. Thanks to him, Mount Tianhang still stands tall and proud to this day, and the blood that he lost in the battle turned into the Bishui River. <laughs> Whether you believe the story or not, I'm just happy you're willing to listen to me tell it. Surely the reason the Lantern Rite exists is because people throughout the ages have chosen to come together as friends, rather than stay in isolation. Goodbye. May the flames of wisdom spread to all, and never be extinguished. This is the plasterite to be used for the Ming Xiao Lantern. The whole of the Xiao Market is centered around it. Oh, hello! Who are you? I'm Zhang Zhao. Recently, I've been tracking progress on the construction of the Ming Xiao Lantern. You seem like newcomers. Is this your first lantern rite? Yes! How can you tell? Well, I don't remember running into any weird and wonderful mascots at last year's festival. You'll see lots of people releasing little lanterns during the festival. Those ones are called Xiao Lanterns. But there's also a huge one, a joint effort by all the people of Liyue Harbor. That one is called the Ming Xiao Lantern. Almost every business in Liyue has a booth at the annual Xiao Market. But despite its popularity, this is the one time of the year they're not looking to make a profit. The street market exists solely to raise the funds and materials required for the Ming Xiao Lantern construction. Oh, the Xiao Market. Does it have stuff you can eat? Plenty. And if I do say so myself, the Lantern Rite is the best festival for sampling Liyue's local delicacies. It is Liyue's biggest annual festival, after all. Showing off your craft is a great way to drum up a reputation. So even if there's no Mora to be made, everyone is secretly going all out to get their produce under the spotlight. Folks in Liyue are so smart. If you need any help, you can look for Wangya. She's overseeing the Lantern Rite. She's usually somewhere around the Xiao Market. She's your first port of call. Oh, will she know which stall sells the tastiest stuff? <laughs> no doubt. When it comes to the Lantern Rite, no one knows more than she does. Got it! Let's go to the Xiao Market and look for Wangya. And then, go to the stall with the tastiest food and eat till we're stuffed. Hi, 
Hi, can I help you? Oh, from the look of you, you don't hail from Li Yue. Are you traveling through? Welcome to the Xiao Market. Overseeing? <laughs> not exactly. The Lantern Rite Festival belongs to the whole of Li Yue. It's not just one person's to oversee. I'm just taking care of a few small things, doing my bit to make sure everyone who joins in the festivities has a good time. We want to know where the tastiest food in the whole wide Xiao Market is. Hmm... The tastiest? Hard to say. I guess that depends on your personal preference. Still, what I can tell you is that everyone's talking about Yin Yen's stall. If it gets any busier over there, I'm gonna have to bring the Melilith to keep things orderly. Hey, you'd best get over there quick before the streets get too crowded with people. Oh, and if you are heading to Yin Yen, please do me a favor and run this document over to him. It's a summary of the data from last year's Lantern Rite, compiled by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. It has a few operational tips for our vendors. If you're heading in that direction, it'd be a great help. As thanks, I've got a gift for you, when you get back. Healthy body, healthy- You really don't have enough hands on deck. If I'd known, I would have roped some others in. What's the best thing on the menu? Ah, customers. Take a look and decide for yourself. I can do anything on the menu. Or if there's something in particular you're after, I can do that instead. Woohoo! Paimon will have... Huh. Now that you mention it, you do have a lot of options for a food stall. <laughs> Naturally. If there's a dish I can't cook, I've yet to hear about it. Uh-huh. Same every year. The old operational tips. How's this for a tip? Leave the handbook to one side and concentrate on the killer cooking. Ugh, hand it over. I'll use it to feed the fire later. Come on then, place your orders. Aren't you here to eat? There are so many. This one looks good, but Paima wants to try that one too. Huh? Grilled tiger fish? That's the one Pervasis love to eat, isn't it? Hmm. Seeing as the Lantern Rite is about commemorating the heroes of the past, let's order this one! This can be our way of honoring his memory! Ah, your friend has a good eye for food. That's our specialty. Please wait. I'll have it ready for you in no time. Okay, here's your grilled tigerfish. What do you think? Mmm, delicious! Of course! A guide would Paimon be otherwise? <laughs> well, hope you enjoy your food. I gotta see to some other customers. If you get hungry again, you know where I am. We're way behind schedule. So you're back. What do you think? Yin Yan makes some mean grub, huh? Ah, <sighs> so tasty. Oh yeah? <laughs> he said that last year, too. <sighs> if he'd listened to our marketing tips, he'd be doing even better by now. Anyway, not to worry. Here's the gift I was talking about. This Xiao Lantern is for you. Wow, such a beautiful lantern! How is it made? Uh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to explain the process concisely. But if you're interested in Xiao Lanterns, you can ask Jingming over there. He's in charge of both the Xiao and Ming Xiao Lanterns. So, he's responsible for this super duper huge one too? That's right. He should be easy to find. Just over there, I think. If we could make a Xiao Lantern for Xiao, maybe that would cheer him up a bit. Let's find Jing Ming and see what he has to say. At this rate, hmm, we should be able to meet the deadline. Teach you how to make Xiao lanterns. Oh, hmm. You don't look like locals to me. Looking to try your hand at making your own? I'll be happy to teach you. There's no one way to make a Xiao lantern, but let me start by showing you the simplest one. I should have some spare materials over here. Uh, just a second. Ah. 
They still need a bit of work. Take these and give it a go. That was so complicated. Paimon is all out of brain juice. Did you get it? <laughs> uh, it all comes with practice. No one's expecting your first try to be perfect. Folks like you who want to learn my craft are a rare find nowadays. Did you build that humongous Ming Shao Lantern using the same method? That one? Hmm. I suppose it's fair to say the method is the same, broadly speaking. But no single person can take credit for it. The whole of Liyue comes together to make it. So it was a community effort? Surely you've heard about it. The Xiao Market is actually a fundraiser, aiming to support the Ming Xiao Lantern's construction. Whoa! So that's how the Ming Xiao Lantern is built! Such is the Lantern Rite tradition. The Ministry of Civil Affairs might be covering the bulk of the costs, but it's the citizens of Liyue that donate the materials, among many other things. Oh, so that's what that little girl meant when she said she donated her ragdoll. But since when do you build Ming Xiao lanterns out of ragdolls? Well, the Lantern Ride is a major festival. If somebody wants to make a contribution, no matter how small, or in this case symbolic, we tend not to reject them. All well-meaning contributions are gratefully received. Especially considering how grand of an occasion the Lantern Ride is for everyone, people believe that joining the effort might bring them good luck. <laughs> Alrighty then. Shouldn't you get going? With all that the festival has to offer, I'm sure you must be on a busy schedule. Of course, if you want to make another Seattle Lantern at any time, you know where to find me. Happy Lantern Ride. Have fun. Aren't they? This is the Lantern Ride Gala. <laughs> So, did you find Jingming? We did! And he taught us all about how to make shell lanterns! Even though Paimon can't really remember any of it. <laughs> no worries. You can always ask Jingming if you need to refresh your memory. I should go. Duty calls. Happy lantern, right? Should we really be off work this early? There is still a lot left to do. 